foundation is the cornerstone of any structure, providing stability and support. Shallow foundations or spread footings are chosen when the soil near the surface can bear the load. However, there are plenty of types of shallow foundation, so it's important that you know and recognize the situations to use the right type. Today, we embark on a journey through the shallow foundation, focusing on the intriguing topic of types of shallow foundations, their uses, pros, and cons. But before we move on, I'd like you to subscribe to our YouTube channel as we make relevant videos of your interest. Let's begin with the basics. Now make sure to watch till the end because I'm going to reveal a very interesting aspect that you would be pretty helpful to easily identify the type of footing by just looking at it. Now let's explore the diverse world of shallow foundations. First, the classic strip footing. These long, continuous concrete pads distribute the load of the building over a larger area, making them ideal for supporting walls in residential and light commercial construction. Pros include simplicity and cost-effectiveness, but they may not be suitable for heavily loaded structures. Moving on to the isolated footing. These individual pads support single columns, offering flexibility in design and construction, particularly when columns are spaced at varying distances. Pros include adaptability, but they might require more excavation and materials. Now brace yourself for the raft foundation a massive slab covering the entire building footprint. Wrap foundations are common in areas with weak soil, preventing differential settlement by evenly distributing the building load. Pros include stability, but they might be costlier and challenging in uneven terrain. Let's not forget the grillage foundation. This consists of closely spaced steel beams and is suitable for heavy structural loads. Pros include increased load-bearing capacity, but construction complexity and cost are considerations. Next is the combined footing. This type supports two or more columns and is employed when columns are closely spaced. They can either be in rectangular shape or trapezoidal shape. Pros include efficient load distribution, but careful design is necessary to avoid differential settlement. Last is the strap footing. It is a type of combined footing, consisting of two or more column footings connected by a concrete beam. This type of beam is called a strap beam. It is used to help distribute the weight of either heavily or eccentrically loaded column footings to adjacent footings. Strap footing is required when the distance between the columns is so far apart that the combined trapezoidal footing becomes a little narrow and there are high bending moments. In these circumstances, the column is provided with its independent footings and the beam is there to join the two footings. Let's see now how to choose the right type of foundation. Choosing the right foundation depends on factors like soil conditions, building loads, and construction costs. Engineers analyze, evaluate, and make informed decisions. Transitioning to construction techniques, precision is key. Whether pouring concrete for a strip footing or placing steel reinforcements for an isolated footing, accurate excavation, quality materials, and proper techniques are paramount. Remember, a strong foundation sets the stage for a durable and resilient structure. So whether you're a student eager to learn or a seasoned professional continuing to innovate, keep digging in the fascinating world of civil engineering. The foundations you build today will shape the skylines of tomorrow. Empower the future of civil engineering.